submitted this research paper. And this is for several reasons. One is because we are nationally accredited as a dietetics program. Writing and researching the literature and writing is an important component of that. It's required that we put that somewhere in our curriculum. And I put it in life soon because I love writing and I want to help you become the best writer you can and give you that experience while you're in school. Don't feel intimidated. Many students come to this point and go, feel insecure. I have, gee, I don't know how to write. This is too hard. I've never done it before. I, what if I don't do it right? Most people feel this way. You know, quite frankly, when I started my master's thesis a million years ago, in those days, we wrote things out by hand, just bringing that up. Um, I didn't know what to do. I had a big table full of paper and research articles and stuff because everything was paper then. And I remember just sitting there going, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. And, but it worked out. You just dig away on it and figure it out, look at the guidelines. And then it works out where, um, you know, you start to get some skills developed. So in our courses, we're working on skill development for accreditation, but also for you as a professional. So please don't feel like this is a punitive assignment. This assignment is intended to make you a better writer and help you professionally, okay? So, and I will also say that students are, successes often exceeds their expectations. Once they dig into it, they go, oh, well, I can do this. I didn't know I could write, but I can. I didn't know I could collaborate, but I can collaborate. And they come out feeling empowered. So it's one step at a time, right? So what I'm gonna do now is share my screen to show you the research project assignment, which is available for you on Canvas now so you can take a look at it. I'm gonna talk about it for maybe 15 minutes. Please focus. And after that, then I'm gonna separate you guys into groups because you're gonna work on these papers two at a time. So I'm gonna separate you into breakout rooms. I don't know if you've done those before, but a breakout room means the Zoom meeting is just between you and your partner. And as an instructor, I can come in and haunt you, right? <laughs> Periodically. Or you can come back to me and say, we have a question. But what I want you to do during your breakout period, is get started on the project, read it together, share each other's contact information, start working on what, how you're gonna to pledge to work together, get to know each other and, and so forth. So you wanna spend the whole time of the class period doing this, but I'm not going to dominate the entire period with me talking. Is everybody good with that? You've been in breakout rooms before. Yes. Cool, thank you. All right, so let's see if I don't screw this up. So I'm gonna share the screen. Yeah. And um, you don't need to see my email, do you? There you go. I have this all set up. All right. Oh, come on. I've been working on this for like days. All right. Does everybody see a class? Yes. You see my thank you. And then you, you have my whole desktop here. So you see this too, this is a planner. Yes. Okay, cool. We'll get to this in a minute. Calm down, we'll get to it in a minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is guide you through the, um, uh, go to modules and guide you through the research paper assignment. Okay, everybody ready? Okay. so. This is the assignment. This is a major assignment for this course. It's important as I indicated for accreditation for a program, but primarily for a skill set that you absolutely must have. Doesn't matter how much you know about nutrition, how much you've learned, that matters, but you need to be able to express it in writing and to be able to say it verbally and to be confident in what you know. So this research paper assignment gives you the opportunity to research an aspect of nutrition in the primary literature, which is scientific literature, and read those papers and figure out what we know about something. So if an assignment was about breastfeeding, 
then you would be looking at, well, how does breastfeeding affect infant nutrition? How important is it compared to infant formula? You know, and so you would be looking at the, the research papers that people have conducted, and you would look and, and make, you know, critically evaluate, read those papers, critically evaluate it, and decide how to express it. So let's fast forward. Let's, let's imagine that you're five years down the road, you're a professional, you have a job as a pediatric dietitian or any other kind of dietitian or nutrition professional. And you've been asked to give a talk about something, even something you don't, in nutrition, but something you're not super confident about because you don't already know. How do you get ready for that? You go to PubMed, you look for research papers about that topic, you learn to determine the current state of knowledge. And you also Google search and you Google places like American Academy of Pediatrics and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Academy of Nutrition Dietetics. You look for organizations that have a reputation for accuracy. And so you look at accurate information and from that search of accurate information, you summarize what we know about that topic. So somebody wants to ask, uh, if you, somebody wants to give a presentation on how much protein should um, uh, weightlifters take, everybody ingest, everybody's interested in that at some point in life, right? How do you answer that question, right? So you do a search, look at the scientific literature and, and organizations, and then you come up with the reason why we say, well, how much, so maybe, twice the RDA is the answer. And how do we know that? We know that because organizations say that's the case and that's because what scientific papers say too. And I bring this up because a lot of you were interested in sports nutrition. And what's interesting is over the years, you're probably familiar with this, but if you work out and you go to a gym, people often think that or tell you that you can build better muscles if you just eat more protein. Have y'all ever heard that? Just anybody? I almost keep that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a, it's a norm, right? It's, it's a norm. You go to the gym, they go, well, just drink muscle milk or do this or do this or do this. And as a professional, you would be able to go, is that really a good idea? Is that really what the science says? Should it be that high? All right. So the same thing, how, you know, that kind of question can be answered in the same way that you answer questions for this class. Should a 12 month old drink milk? If they should, how much? Does it matter? Should it be low fat milk, full fat milk? Should a, when should we offer foods to an infant? You know, they start out even drinking milk or formula. When do we give them food? Why do we pick a certain age? What do we go by? And then how do we go about doing it? Right, so, so the purpose of this project is to give you a slice of important questions about the literature and, and then have you take a look. Just so you know, up until right now, our government has never said what people should do for in feeding kids from zero to two. New guidelines came out over the Christmas holidays. Up until then, it's always been, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. So, so what we're doing with this research paper assignment is addressing the question and learning from it. So use it as an example, whatever your interests are, this is how to go about a project. Does that make sense for everybody? I'm gonna pause and see if you have a question. I have a question, but I'm worried that you're gonna address it like later on in this lecture, but um, I'm just, I'm just wondering about the structure of the paper, if it's gonna be written more in the style of like a lit review or if it's gonna be just like a, a normal research paper. Okay, this is, a, I hope this is addressed specifically. So it's, uh, cause I, I try to be very specific. So when we go through this, if it doesn't make sense, ask me that question. But it's like a literature review, but I actually tell you how I want you to do it. Okay, perfect, thanks. Okay, anybody else? You ready? You want me to get off my high horse and talk? All right. All right. All right. Can everybody see the screen? Okay. If you can't, you better say something because I can't see all of you anymore. Is this big enough? 
Yep. Fantastic. Okay, so this is a module in the research paper, and this is where you get your information. Now, notice the module says getting oriented to the project. So this is read this, figure it out, study it. Don't just read it once and go, gee, I hope I remember this, because this is many questions you might have about the project or answer here and in these files. So this is complicated. It's like, well, why can't I just write a paper? Why do I want you to have several tabs about what I do? This just organizes information to make it easier. There are a few assignments in here. So your final paper, your final research paper that you will write will be worth 80 points. Working up to that, you will do an, an assignment here, an assignment here, an assignment here. So collectively, you will end up five to, yeah, and, and you will do a peer evaluation. And then collectively, your research paper counts 100 points but you get it in increments. So you work on this as an interim assignments. So this explains how that works. Read it again. All right, I'm gonna go over it, but this explains how that works. And then whenever you see uh, on your uh, uh, um, module where it says five points, five points, five, these are assignments. And when you go to your syllabus page, these due dates are indicated for each assignment, okay? So just to get you started, so the first thing I wrote here is getting oriented to the assignment. Okay, research paper assignment. So this page describes everything you need to know, and then the subsequent attachments help you remember it. It takes a little while, you gotta read through it a couple of times. So um, if you wanna look at the entire paper assignment together, you can look at it here. It's a document, you can download it and it says everything. Just, it's the same handout I used to give in class before we were all online, okay? And so you can read over it or you can just go through everything here. Then we, I assign topics. Can you see this file right here? See these topics? Infant formula and microbiome, can you see this? Okay, there are, there are 30 people in the class. There are 15 topics. This tells you who one partner is and, we'll, we, we, and the, the other side tells you the other partner. So you have assigned topics for this class and this file here is downloadable right here. So when you need to find who your person is, um, uh, download, uh, you will look at, actually that's the plan of it. You, will, you will look at this. So let me, let me back up here. So, so um, take everything one page at, uh, one page at a time. So the topics will tell you what the topics are. And I went way beyond what I might normally do for class. And, and let me just show you those topics you just saw. And this is available for you. For each of the topics you're gonna cover, what I did is I um, looked at, in, in two, I looked at um, uh, what the current literature says and and later you'll do a video, but in, in what are articles that tell you key information about that topic? So if you're looking at infant formula, right? Infant formula, whatever your number is, you might look at infant formula and here's some articles to get you started. Later you do a video, this tells you, hey, here's some ideas about videos. So this is the, a, a way to get oriented for the project, okay. Now let's go back to not where we were. Canvas is often a little bit weird about going through orders here. Okay, so first of all, I think I just showed you this. This is the planner. Yeah. This document tells you what your topic is and who you're working with. Okay, there are 15 topics. You have access to this. You don't need to write it down now, but you can. Okay, so you have 15 topics and these two, th this is determined alphabetically, these two people work together, these two people work together and so on and so on. Now in the past, I've done this for a long time, in the past I've had people choose partners or do this or do this and it doesn't necessarily help on productivity or learning. And you may, there's always two or three people that don't like group work and I understand that. But the reason I do this as group work is because Employers want to employ people that know how to work together. It's one of the things they often ask. 
What, how do you know how to work together? Have you been have you been part of a group before? And when you work, you're actually a collaborator. You're not alone. You don't get to write a paper by yourself unless you're an entrepreneur. Later on, that's fine. But for the most part, our entry level jobs require you to be able to work with somebody. Some people are going to be great. They're going to be exceed expectations. They're going to here's this, here's this. I already got this done. And some people are going to be recalcitrant, and and you may have to nudge them. What I'm asking you today is meet together and decide how to come together and commit to work together to be the best partner you can be. So this is a topics assignment and you can find this right here on this page. Okay. So continuing on with that module. Um, I, yeah, I've already mentioned this, that I've given you all this information about there's your topic, there's some articles and so forth. So you've got that too. Also, we have a user-friendly page. Let's say your topic is any of the ones, but let's say it's infant formula, your number one. Okay, if your topic is infant formula, I have done a literature review, uh, literature review that gives you really good background information on infant formula. You will also look at PubMed to find your own articles, but if you need help getting started, that's what this is for. Okay, so it's organized by the topics we're going to be covering in class. And so each of the topics has a number and then that there's articles here to help you get started. If I were you uh, working with my colleague, I would start reading these papers and I would zoom together and talk about them and start taking notes. Um, but then so we go to the top, we've done, we have a total of uh, uh, 15 topics and then at the very end of this page are what I call general references. And for example, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or the CDC, we've got a page on infant and toddler nutrition. Okay, um, the American Academy of Pediatrics talks about starting solid foods, things we'll be talking about, and food and feeding. Um, here's a feeding guide from WIC. World Health Organization, what do they say about adding foods to infants and toddler nutrition? So we're focusing on infants and toddlers as an example of looking for literature. And these are key organizations that have done the homework and here's what they say. And I promise you, most parents have no idea how to find this information, what to do with it, how does this translate into reality? So your job as a professional will be to go, well, let me look at key organizations. So if I were you, this took a million hours of work to put together. If I were you, I'd download these files and save them to help you uh, as you work forward in, in your career, because it's a good starting point. So read, look through all of them and see what may be particularly interesting for you. Okay. All right, so let's let me go back to my module here. So what I did is I, I always go back, Canvas doesn't make me giddy with happiness. It's good that it's not always as smooth as I want it to be. So I always come back to modules, when I, the modules, and then, so then I can get back to the research papers. So, so far we've talked about getting oriented, who's gonna work with who, what topics are they going to be? And here's a user-friendly page that can help you get research articles about it. Then there are some assignments, okay? So the assignments, you will work with your co-author to decide when you're going to meet, how you're going to meet, and you're going to write a, as an assignment, you're going to write a little, a, a little a, a pledge. I will meet with you on Wednesday and Friday. I will... Uh, look for articles on this day, I will meet you halfway. When we start writing, I will provide, I will work with you on Zoom to make an outline. You know, this, this type of thing. So you, you pledge what you need to do to work together, and then you put that as your co-author agreement. Notice that many of these things have points as I talked about. So this is due early, and I think it's a week for now, but it's due, so you need to get working with your colleague, figure out how you're gonna to work together and then you submit this. So if you do these things, it's an easy five points. So the whole thing is worth a hundred. So these are, get these done on time, work on them and then you're ready to do your paper and so forth. 
Now, so this is a, the co-author agreement assignment. Here's what it looks like. Okay, um, so this is for the research because it's for the research paper and this tells you, okay, you need to make a co-author agreement. What should you put in it? If you have trouble, what do you do about it? And so forth. And then here's your due date. Uh, it's available from the due date is February 2nd. So I have a little time to look at that, but that's how that goes. So let's look at the next assignment. Okay, the next assignment is how, have you, how many of y'all, I can't see you. Tell me if you've had experience looking for papers in PubMed. Please talk, somebody. Yes. I think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, I have. Yes. Anybody say no? I can't even see you, so just shout out no. I have not. No. I haven't. No. Okay, cool. This is this is so helpful for me and Kristen. Here's what you need to know. In order to do your research project, you need to learn how to find journal articles. This is a way to find journal articles. I know you've read some before because we sort of force it into our nutrition classes. But the way you find them is you go to a website called PubMed and you type in keywords. For example, it might be infant formula and soy because some infant formulas are made out of soy. So you type in keywords and then it'll come up with a bunch of papers. And then you've got to go, well, how much of this is really useful for me? So you kind of skim over them and you pick some that seem to be good for your paper. Now, I'm giving you a quick review of this, but right here, there is a tutorial on how to use PubMed. This is something you can go back to. You and your work, your partner should do this before 24 hours is up. Don't wait, don't go, oh, this isn't due for a week. Do it right now so you're ready to go and then you start to understand what's going on. So this is uh, this is what I do now. I've been working in, as a science, nutrition scientist for over 30 years and always when I'm doing research or getting ready to do getting ready to do uh, uh, experimental studies, I go to PubMed, which is an organization, or it's a website where you can find articles about nutrition and other scientific topics. It's really fun. Go over the tutorial. That's the first thing you need to do. Okay, so this tells you how to get started. Everything is spelled out here. There's an assignment and this will get you going. Okay, so. Then we learn to use another type of another tool, which is how to manage references. Kristen is going to help you with that. Um, then this is the next part, and it tells you what needs to be in a final research paper. And I think this is the part that might be easier to start with because it tells you, oh, what do you want us to do? Okay, so here's, here's what you're coming up with. Um, you get started, you know, you, you figure it out, read through all this kind of stuff, and here's where your grade comes from. Mechanics. Your final research paper should be nine to 10 pages in length, double spaced. Here's a margin size. Have a title. Have names. So this is like a checklist, right? Have your names in the upper right hand corner. Have page numbers at the bottom. Include subheadings. So if you're talking about breastfeeding, you might say benefits of breastfeeding and then uh, breastfeeding compared to formula and so on and so on. So you might have subheadings that show how you've outlined what you're going to talk about. Okay. And then you have references, which are the articles that you find on PubMed, and you will include them at the end of your paper. What you do whenever you write something for a scientific paper. What you do is if you write a fact or you talk about a study, what you do is you, you put a number there and indicate where did I get this information, right? So if you get it from an article in PubMed, then you cite that information. I'm gonna give you some examples in a minute here. Okay, so this is what you need to do. Don't copy. If you go to a great paper and you go, oh my goodness, these guys say this better than I could. Yeah, don't copy and paste it into your paper and say, I'll fix it later. 
never do that because you end up making mistakes sometimes. So what you do is you paraphrase whenever you read stuff, you put it in your own writing on your paper. So, so this is part of is just doing, setting it up, right? Then you'll be graded on your composition. It, we want a logical outline. We want subheadings that guide the reader. Start with an introduction, say why it's important, why this topic's important. Every paragraph should have a purpose and information and information should flow logically from one paragraph to another at the end summarize the state of knowledge about a topic and give recommendations for parents. So let's go with breastfeeding because this isn't anybody's topic this semester. Okay, so several organizations recommend that babies be breastfed at least for 12 months. The idea, you know, it, this ideal doesn't work for everybody. Everybody knows people go to work, women have trouble breastfeeding, the world is very hard for women. So I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying the guidelines are in a perfect world. In a perfect world, do what you can. If women can breastfeed, breastfeeding for at least 12 months is ideal. Right? So that would be one of the guidelines. Try to go for that. Okay. Another guideline is that around six months, continue breastfeeding when you add other foods, so on and so on. So you can come up with recommendations about what should you do for breastfeeding. Now, what you want to do when you're putting this together is also work on your grammar. And everybody comes from a different place on this. Everybody has different experience and different skill set on how well they can write. Not everybody's good at writing from the get-go. We put this in your college curriculum to help you. This isn't intended to be a torture session. This is intended for you to try your hardest to write your best. And then I will take you where you are and provide feedback to help you get better. So if you already write better than I do, then I'll go, hey, good, 100, great job. If, you're, um, if you've got some need for improvement, then I'll show you where those are so that you can keep working. So the idea is writing is kind of fun. You may not know this, but writing is kind of fun when you do it because it's like a puzzle and you get better at it your entire life. I publish a lot of journal articles. I look at something I wrote five years ago, I'm like, wow. It doesn't sound as good as I would write it now. So I've been doing it for a long time and I always feel like I should get better at it, right? So come in where you are and we will work with you to help improve your writing. I wanna help you learn how to assimilate information about a particular topic and explain it well. Okay, so your content should be accurate. Don't make mistakes. Don't say all babies should eat cereal from the, um, shouldn't, all babies should never be breastfed. That would be not accurate, right? So don't make inaccurate statements. Um, you wanna exceed what I talk about in class, learn a little more. So I'm gonna start the semester by talking about these topics. That's gonna to help you. You're gonna hear what I know about the state of knowledge and so forth. And, uh, and then end up with recommendations for parents. How long should they breastfeed? If they can't breastfeed, what should they do? You know, so you give it guidelines. So when I mentioned this earlier, you find research articles from PubMed and then you save them and you use them and then at the end of your paper, you cite them and you say, well, I got this information from reference one. I got this information from reference two. Some of the articles that you read are going to be about experiments. That's called empirical research. If I conduct an experiment, that is an empirical study. Some of the papers you want to use are about studies. Other papers are going to be review articles. What has everybody said about breastfeeding? What does the American Academy of Pediatrics say about breastfeeding? So you will look for the literature and find experimental studies or observational studies, and then you will look at review. I have links here for you to work with with your partner to show you well, what is an empirical research. You know, it explains what I'm just talking about. So you need to do a little homework. Okay. All right. So that's where the points come in. And then at the very end, you'll evaluate your peers. So you guys will evaluate your own work and then also that of your peers. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this all together because 
I know this is on different pages. Sometimes in class, it's so easy to do this together and see where you are. It's a little harder now. So I'm gonna show you, this is the first page of this assignment. The very first thing is a page that pulls it all together. If you do better with the Word document, go here. Okay, so this is available for you. I just downloaded it from the Canvas site. And this says, co-author agreement, here's what you gotta do. How do you find scientific articles? Here's how you do it. Here's another assignment, how do you do it? What exactly do you have to do? Um, how do you put the final research paper? This is the same information that I, get, that I just gave you. It's all on the site. This puts, puts it in one document. Okay, and then you evaluate the information that you here. So before, before I do anything else, because I want to put you in groups and have you review this together and go into PubMed while you're working together and start finding some papers. Because once you do that, this is not going to seem mysterious. If you've never done it before, that's cool. It won't seem mysterious. So do you have any questions first? I have a question. Um, on that resources page where you've given us example articles, are we allowed to use that in our paper or do you just want us to look at those to get a feel of the basic context? Okay, my purpose of giving you those is just complete kindness. Use them, don't use them. It's a good starting point. I spent an entire summer working on them to find information because sometimes I feel like I don't want to leave students in the dark, you know? So the idea was to give you information, use it all, or don't use it if you find better stuff, but it's absolutely please. Does that make sense? I don't like to play keep away with knowledge. I like to actually share it. So if, if I think, if it seems like I could do more, or Christy could do more, let us know. But yeah, use everything. In the chat, you had a, uh, they were thanking you for doing that. For what? Uh, for compiling a list of yeah resources yeah yeah thank you you know I uh, I didn't do it in the past and then I realized you know not everybody we don't start at the same place some students come from different universities and you kind of drop into the university and we don't know exactly what your background is if you come in you know we have everything lined up sequentially in our curriculum but if you come from other universities it's not always that easy I didn't plan on doing this but I'm gonna do this real quick and it may not be smooth because I'm gonna do it real quick um, but I'm just gonna go go to PubMed because sometimes it helps. So here's PubMed. I use this all the time, but this is a different browser. I usually use Safari, so I didn't practice this. But let, this, is, this is what PubMed is. It's a way to find scientific articles. They get they're comprised of 30 million citations. <laughs> okay. So you can I make a through. quick note? When using PubMed, uh, it's best to go through the library for students. Yeah, thank you. And I didn't, I didn't plan that, but yeah, go through the library and go to PubMed. And I think I have an assignment. Okay, but I didn't do it. So this is just a quick and dirty, hey, what do we do about this? So let's think, we're, let's look for something like um, infant formula. Notice how it already knows. Uh, there, there are terms that are already stored in PubMed that help you look for things. And I'm gonna get crazy here and add in soy. And I could actually add in aluminum, but it doesn't find anything. Okay, so I'm just looking at infant formula soy. Everybody see this okay? So see how easy that was? And look, let me make this bigger. Go through the Texas State website, as Kristen said, but already here's articles. If I need to find some articles about infant formula in soy, here it is right here. Here's a 2018 article. Is Do you remember, what, I don't know if you've learned about phytoestrogen. Soy has, um, we'll talk about it a little bit, but soy, like tofu and tempeh and things like that, have a, uh, some compounds that are kind of hormonal, similar to human hormones. It's not really that similar, but sometimes people worry, well, is soy, does soy affect my risk for breast cancer? Does soy affect sexual development and all this kind of stuff? Um, so far, the literature has been pretty calm about that, but you know, I always ask the question when I teach my class for my undergraduates, I go through all the different kinds of formulas. So I look to see, do we know anything about it? For the most part, soy infant formula has been pretty safe, except for premature infants. And so, but you can look here and, and you can find some really cool information now. So 
uh, uh, here's some stuff that may not be interesting to you at all. But this is nice and generic, phytoestrogens. Is there a problem with development, which you may already know? This one, why would you read this? Fragile X syndrome. We haven't talked about that. It's way out of your range of what you would look for. So you kind of look in uh, soy infant formula feeding and menstrual pain. Well, that's not interesting either. It's not about babies. Soy infant formula, is it that bad? But let's have a fun article, but look, it's 2011. So you want to kind of see what people have looked at more recently. Now, here's a trick. If you find a good article that's general, you can, and this is called a review article, and you can review articles, our articles that kind of summar, summarize the state of knowledge. You can click this box and only get review articles if you want to. Let's say I just want to see about this one. So I go here and look, it's free. So I can download it and have this PDF file of this and then use it for my paper if I want to. But what's really cool about it is that you can also find, you can read it and go, how interesting is this for my paper? And then you can find similar articles. These are old, this one's too old, this one's pretty old, but sometimes there's current articles when you do this. So I find these pretty old. These are similar articles. And if you keep digging around, these are cited by them. I mean, somebody else has done, published an article and they reference this paper, and these are gonna be more current. Now you find something about infant formula that's in 2020. If it's what you want, that's a question, but you find more current articles. Okay, use of soy-based formulas in cow's milk allergy. Uh, I don't know what lights and shadows mean. So anyway, there's ways to mess around with PubMed to find papers that really click. Now, here's an important feature that you have to be careful of. Okay, let's say I just typed in infant formula and that's somebody's topic. Look how many results there are. Can you read 15,000 papers? Nobody can. This is so, so general, it's not even useful. Sometimes I'll do this first when I have a topic and go, gee, what shows up first? And so this is, looks like a review article. And if, if you just want to find reviews, again, you can click this over here. And a review article is something that, again, summarizes the state of knowledge. Okay, so you can go, well, key features of breast milk and infant formula. This is the kind of thing I might put in my review. I, I find this to be interesting. So you can download these things. You can select them and download them too. So anyway, so then this is a free article. If you like it, you can get it just like I showed you. And then you can kind of flip through this. The next article and the next topic in the class is on prebiotics and infant formula. So if you typed in prebiotics, you might actually find this too. So look how interesting these things are. And there's lots of free articles. It is so easy to get articles. Please don't take the first 10 or 15 that you find and you go, oh good, I got my research done. Because a lot of them are stupid or not relevant or not interesting or not easy to read. I shouldn't say stupid. Okay, not easy to read. So, but but what you want is you want to read something that's readable for you, that's relevant to what you want to learn about and, and what you want to talk about. So kind of have to mess around. Now look at this infant formula, American family physician sound, physician sounds good to me, but it's 2009. Last time I checked, it's 2021. So that's kind of old. So anyway, you can use these boxes here, publication date. You can say, hey, I only want to read things five years and I only want reviews. And now we're down to 416. That's a little better than 15,000, isn't it? So these are all review articles and we've got some current ones here. So 2018, 2016. So this is a way to learn about how to gather information. I don't want you to follow only one path because this is how you learn. Mess around with PubMed, use your keywords, and once you find interesting things, look, this came up again. Once you find interesting things, throw in that keyword. Like here's one that you'll you'll figure out is these are uh, the essential fatty acids. Uh, um, and what does the literature say about that? So so play around. Don't be intimidated. This is when I'm preparing for your class. I often look at a, a caffeine and miscarriage. 
which I probably just spelled wrong. And yeah, um, I'll look to this because everybody wants to know, is there a link between drinking coffee and miscarriage? So every year I, when I prepare for your lectures, I look to see well, what's the current literature say? And I'll do this every year, five years, or I may do one year because I've already read everything. Ah, there's only one paper. So what are the recommendations? So do you understand what I'm getting at here? I want to find out what articles say, but there's not one way to do it. There's just an intrinsic way of looking at articles. And the more you do this, the more of a effectual scientist you are and someone that can explain about information. So this is PubMed. You have an assignment on finding articles in PubMed. And then there's also an assignment on how to organize references and cite them in a paper. And Kristen is going to help with that. OK, so now I'm going to stop the share. And I'm going to 